I have to win a championship in this rebuild, but I can only recruit one player per state, and this might not even be possible to do. I'm going to be starting with zero players on a team, and NCAA football requires you to have at least 48 players on a roster, so we have to use up pretty much every state in the United States, and at the same time, I also have to rebuild Colorado State. Starting with zero players, we're going to struggle in the Mountain West, and sometimes states like New Hampshire only generate a couple of prospects. Outside of the 50 states in the game, we can also use Canada and Washington, D.C., but that doesn't really help us much, because there's going to be a lot of deal breakers, and whenever that happens, I just can't get anybody from that territory. Like I said, I made everybody a redshirt senior on this roster, so we have nobody on our team going into next season, and we're not going to have any pipeline states in this video, but this screen's going to be very useful to track how many players we have at each state. I don't really know how I want to do this, but I'll probably start adding one prospect to our board from each of these territories that are smaller, and the amount of deal breakers that I'm already running into is insane. A lot of these players are saying we're in too small of a conference, and that's going to make it even harder to recruit. It's taking me a long time to build out our board, but I'm almost done with it. And I'm already making multiple mistakes targeting players that are from the same state. That's a problem because I found this quarterback, Brandon Frank, that ended up turning into a 76 overall. But then I got this athlete with 98 speed, and they're both from the state of Louisiana. I'm honestly just confused at how I'm even going to do this, but I did find a wide receiver from Alaska, a tight end from Montana, and then this punter from Rhode Island, along with a five-star linebacker from Maine. So those are small, unique states that could get us some great prospects. And what I'm learning is it's pretty much going to be a battle for all of these guys, which is not a good thing. You can sign up to 25 players in a class, and we have nobody on our team next year, so I can't be putting 700 points into a player that we might not even get. And I'm going to spend a lot of time revamping this board, but at least for Alaska, instead of getting this wide receiver, we can go after this corner, because nobody else seems to want him. You all won't see the entire process that goes on behind the scenes, but this is frustrating. I find a gym in Greg Jackson, but he is from Connecticut, and so is Kevin Talley, so now I have to take one off my board. And the same goes for Casey Harrison. I thought I had the best player from Idaho until I scouted and found Mark Robinson. After doing some more eliminations though, I think we're starting to get somewhere as you can see the targets are all from one state. And my main strategy has to be to go after players that aren't being targeted by other schools, but that can change throughout the year and this is what the entire board is looking like as I scroll to the top. You'll see some athletes in there with some of them being Juco's, but we need some immediate help on this team. And I have to go for the 78 overall tight end from Montana because that's such a unique thing along with this 5 star from Maine. Since we technically don't have any players on our team, I can't play in any of these games games, but I can schedule players for a visit. And that's how we were able to land our first two commits. If you're from Rhode Island, this punter's representing your state. And if you're from Arkansas, we have this athlete that I'm probably going to put at corner. But frustration could start to set in because this running back from Idaho I thought was a lock is now being pursued by Florida State. And I don't think we're going to get him or this five-star linebacker from Maine. On the bright side though, we picked up an amazing athlete who is of course from Ohio, but he's going to make a big difference for us. Alongside a quarterback from South Dakota, a cornerback from Alaska, and then this tight end from Montana. I think it's going to take us a long time to build a roster that only has one recruit from every state, but this is going to be a fun challenge, so I'm down with sitting here for a few days. As the first year went on, we continued to pick up more signings, but I don't think we're going to be able to get 25 different ones, which is a shame, because I was hoping I'd be able to make that happen as a level 15 head coach. If we don't get an upgrade soon, we're probably going to lose out on Blake Newton, and that stinks, but we're so close to falling out of the battle, which would happen the next week, and there's nothing that I can do about it. Going into the offseason, we made a lot of good signings, though, and that includes an 80 overall Juco wide receiver from California. California that'll be with us for a couple of seasons, and Chad Peters, a quarterback from Louisiana that's probably going to start for us. Even though we had zero players on our team, I'd also get fired, but I thought ahead and made sure I prepared for that, which is why every time that happens, I get to restart as a level 15 head coach. That's the only way we're going to have a chance in this rebuild, and we're going to get two transfer requests, but I think I'm only going to accept this right end from Texas. We can find a better player from Colorado than a 63 overall, and this is how I split up the offseason points, where I was hoping we'd sign all four of them, and we did. To my surprise, in our first year at Colorado State, we signed a top 13 class, but things are only going to get harder from here because there's a ton of states that we're not going to be able to recruit from now. Interestingly enough, we've already filled up pretty much all of our quarterback, halfback, and wide receiver positions during this first class, and we still have five athletes to move around, which means we're probably going to have to put some of these players on the defensive side of the ball. A lot of them can play there though, like Jermaine Elliott being a 77 corner, but Michael Ramsey drops by a lot, so we're going to put him over at halfback. As for Lionel Barry, he's going to play free safety for us, while this guy from Illinois is going to be our strong safety. As for our training results, our transfer was the only player that was able to improve, and you all are going to see that we have a roster of 54 players, but that's because the game automatically puts a bunch of walk-ons on there. I can't cut all of them, which is going to make it even harder to track what players we've recruited, and I forgot to recruit an entire offensive line, so through the five positions, there's only one player that can really start. Until I'm able to recruit enough guys to replace all the walk-ons, there are going to be multiple players from the same state, but they're 40 overalls, and it's not like somebody like Jay Green's going to help us with his 57 throw accuracy. I actually 
build out this map so I could keep track better of what states we've already used. And I'm hoping that we can get some players from Washington DC this time where it looks like there's even a five star available. Of the four players from there though, three of them busted. So we're gonna go after this guy, Wade Smith. And this is where I have to start being very careful about what states we use to get certain prospects. I know we're really gonna need offensive linemen. So I found a bunch from different states for us to target. And I know this season's probably not gonna go very well, but I'm curious what our team overall is. For only bringing in like 20 players, a 55 isn't terrible. And fixing our offensive line plus some other positions might make it to where we're not the worst team in the country. At that rating, no matter what happens, we're probably not gonna win a single conference game. And quarterback Chad Peters might get hurt one game in. The poor guy doesn't have an offensive line, but I'm gonna try to fix that in recruiting. And his first stat line for Colorado State's pretty rough. Of these six offensive linemen, I'm hoping at least three or four wanna come to our school. And it's not looking too good for us as every single one of these guys is gonna be a battle that would go on throughout the entire year. Overall, this class is not looking good so far as we're gonna have to get lucky, but I did find this 80 overall athlete that has 88 throw power. So I'd love to get a prospect like that. And there's still a lot of states that are untouched. Michigan was one of them that came to mind, but I feel like we could get a lot better than a 66 overall tackle. And my brain's already hurting, so I'm ready to hop into a game. If we're gonna beat anybody, it's gonna be an FCS school. So this is our one chance in season number two to snag a win. And our quarterback from Louisiana has let us down the field to score a touchdown already. Our offense is pretty solid, to be honest. But I do have to make sure that I escape the pocket pretty quick because they don't hold it for long. And Steve Roach has already caught two touchdown passes. The wide receiver from Kansas is putting on a show. And I'm a little bit worried about this third and nine because we don't have great defenders out there. So I figured we were going to give that up. We'd eventually hold them to a field goal though. And even though it looks like it's going in, I'm not really concerned because the longer the game goes on for, the more our defense continues to shut them down, except for this third and 15 that we're about to give up to them. That would lead to a touchdown, but maybe we can get the stop on the two point conversion and we don't. We'd then start trading touchdowns back and forth and on third and 14, we pick it up. But our offensive line gave us almost zero time. And I hope the ref doesn't say this wasn't a catch as it looks like his right foot might not have gotten down in time. It was reversed. So now we have to send out our punter from Rhode Island. And I don't think this is going to take the bounce we needed, but they just made a huge mistake. And even if our offensive line can't hold a block, we are going to continue to try to run the ball. And this is what we needed. I cannot stress enough how important it is that we come out with a win in this game, but we drop it. And now we have a tough decision. I decided to put our punter at kicker too, so we could go out and make this. But our rough defense has to be able to get them off of the field. And this is going to be thrown where it's dropped. They should have picked that up, but they didn't. And now we're going to do our best to run out the rest of the clock. They know exactly what's coming here, but we're going to pitch it to our running back or wide receiver. And he is going to fight short. So we could kick it back to them, but I want to end the game now. And that's what we are able to do. The walk-on offensive linemen did their job there, but I'm still shooting to replace them all during this season. And we might have to change up who we're targeting. After getting that last one, I'm not expecting another one to happen, but if it did sometime throughout the season, that would be sweet. And we're like 25 overalls worse than pretty much every other team on our schedule. Since we're losing these battles to Oklahoma, and it looks like we're not going to be able to come back, what I have done with our recruiting board is find some other players that play offensive line that we can go after. And I was going to schedule them for a visit this week, but Oklahoma's already beaten us to it, so I think they're about to get both prospects. That is so frustrating. I was really hoping we could snag at least one of them, because it's going to be super rare to find an 81 overall from Maryland, and we just keep on losing. Like expected, our top two targets have gone to the Sooners, but we did get the 80 overall athlete, so that's going to be an amazing quarterback for us. And we can start trying to find other prospects in Maryland, but there's just not that much to choose from besides maybe Aaron Williams. He comes in at a 65 overall, and the only thing that went right for us this season was beating an FCS school. We need players to start signing to us, and another visit week we're going to have is going to be against New Mexico, but I don't think hopping into it's going to change anything because we're still so much worse than them, so we'll see what happens in Sim, and they beat us by 26. Luckily, that wouldn't stop us from picking up some linebackers in our first alignment in this class. We'd eventually get locked out of the top prospect left on our board, and I'm so close to leveling up, so I'm hoping it can happen after I sim this game against San Jose State, which it did by just 30 points, and that's gonna save us. Now we can open the door and get right back into the battle for Steve Martin, and all we need that to do is carry us into the offseason so we can load up points on him. This 58 overall from Minnesota is pretty useless, but we also would get some guys like Tim Taylor that I'm excited about, and from my home state, Kentucky, I'm hoping that Jay Marshall, who only has one letter for his first name, is able to represent my state in the right way. Our final game of the year is against Utah State, and I was hoping that we'd get lucky at least one time during Sim this season, but it never occurred. I think Aaron Williams can also play offensive line though, so there are a lot of guys that should help us next year, and these stats from Chad Peters are really rough to look at. Our running backs from Idaho and South Carolina weren't terrible though, and Juco Jr. wide receiver Mark McCoy from California had the best stats on the team. Defensively, the linebacker from Canada had 126 tackles, while 48 overall walk-on Dylan O'Neill had 11 and a half sacks.
backs. Now we are going to have to cut him in the offseason because the transfer right end is also from Texas, but I wasn't expecting stats like that and I've been fired again. That scares me because it could cause players to transfer out, but the only player we're losing is a walk-on, so that doesn't affect us. Now we did have a player that wanted to transfer, but he's only a 51 overall, and I think we can get a higher overall player from Georgia, so we're just going after these two prospects. We'd only get one of those guards, but we got the higher overall one, so I can't complain and we still had a top 25 class. Now I thought I was going to play this athlete from a Nevada at quarterback, but he actually makes for an 82 overall wide receiver, and we actually needed some on this team, so that was the perfect fit. I figured Aaron Williams would help out our offensive line, but he doesn't play there, and he's probably going to just go over at strong safety, which worked out pretty well for us, but there's still a lot of positions that we have to fill. Now when it comes to how players improved, I'm pretty happy with how much Michael Ramsey jumped, but I have a mess to deal with whenever it comes to cutting players, and all of these fullbacks are guys that we have to get rid of. There's a lot fewer walk-ons on this team now, but there's still about 10 of them, and once I go through the map of states that we can recruit in this season, there's not going to be many available. I am going to start the process of redshirting guys though, just because we can, and the reason for that is because some of these players need an extra year of development. I've updated the map too, and the states that are yellow are the states that we have seniors in, so we had quite a few options of players that we could go after, and that's how I've been able to build this incredible board. I've been saving up some big states like California, Georgia, and Florida, and we've already gotten ourselves up to a 75 overall. Now the issue is during that time it took us to get there, we fall into a one-star school, so we're not an attractive landing spot for a lot of the prospects we're going after, especially since we're still projected to finish last in the Mountain West Conference, and we can't beat Colorado. Now, like expected, there's a lot of these guys at the top of our board that we're not going to get, but the most hurtful two have to be these guys from Arizona and Florida, especially Cliff Moss, because he would have been incredible. When Florida's getting 300 more points than us, there's absolutely nothing you can do, so we're going to look for another player from the state, and of these five guys, our best bet is probably just to go with another corner. It took a little bit of tweaking, but this is what our board looks like now, and I found Steve Williams, who is in New York, which we haven't filled up yet, and he's going to be a good athlete. If we can land him, I think we'll just move him over to quarterback so we can cut this guy, and I don't know if we have to hop into this game this year. We went from a 55 overall to a 75 overall, and we are going to lose by 28, so maybe we're not as good as our overall says, and we're 100% playing this rivalry matchup. We also started randomly gaining on this 78 overall linebacker from Arizona, so I'm glad I didn't give up on him, and everybody's being scheduled for a visit against Air Force. There's a lot of four stars coming to Colorado State, so we need to take down our in-state rivals, and the crowd that we have at this home game is not very impressive. If the visiting recruits can look past that, though, they might appreciate that we're doing well so far, and I didn't think we would be since our backup quarterback is in the game. Two of our halfbacks have also gotten hurt, so it's a miracle that we're currently driving down inside the red zone, and I can't believe how many small issues we've had so far, but it should be fine. Even if we're not getting a touchdown, we're taking the lead here, and our defense is much improved from last season, but we're not going to stop them on this third and 10, where they're also going to break the tackle, and they might just get into the end zone on this play. They would right after that, but we have Peters back, so he has let us down the field for this touchdown. So we should go into halftime with a lead over Air Force, and I'm calling a timeout after that stop. We still have a minute to get more points, and with this punt, we're going to have the ball starting around midfield, so I have faith that we're going to get at least a field goal, and that's a bad throw. The kicker from Kentucky is going to come out onto the field, though, and drill this down the middle, and he's representing my state well, but Air Force is giving us some issues in the third quarter, and we're very lucky this guy doesn't know how to drag a foot. I don't know what happened to our coverage there, but it certainly wasn't pretty, and we're not getting over to that. So their tight end's been the one player that we can't stop, but they'd missed their extra point, and ever since then, nobody's been able to get anything. We do have the ball with three minutes left, though, and it's a little bit easier to run now that we have an offensive line that can actually hold their blocks. So my thought process is we're just gonna settle for the game-winning field goal, and having Michael Ramsey back out there on the field's made a big difference. When we're healthy, I'm confident that we can beat most teams in our conference, but that's only if I'm hopping into the game and not simming it. It's always a surprise to see a kicker win player of the game, but he did well, so we've signed a commit from Nebraska, Indiana, Utah, and Arizona, the middle linebacker I thought we wouldn't get. This athlete's also probably going to turn into a safety, but with the signing of Joe Howe, we have to take off this other Arizona prospect from our board, and I might also take Andrew Mays off our board because I feel like we can get better out of Florida. Our next opponent's number 18, Oregon, so I'm already prepared for us to get used to losing again, and that was expected. Now that we don't have to go after as many players, though, I think recruiting's going to get a lot less stressful in this rebuild. Mark Payne's the only one we're behind on, and he couldn't come on the last visit, so he's coming to this game. Beating Boise State would definitely help our odds at making the Mountain West Conference Championship, but Utah State's an 88 overall, so even if we got lucky in Sim, that's a long shot. The Broncos also got off to a really good start, but we're doing our best to try to come back, and Peters is not going to outrun those linemen. This is a huge third and goal, and we are going to have a receiver, but we're still trailing by 10 points, so we need to be able to get the ball back before the half, and that's what we're going to do. We're putting ourselves in a risky position by going for it on fourth and five, and I was hoping for the best, but that didn't work out, so they're probably going to get themselves 
themselves into field goal range instead and we don't grab it. At the end of the day, they were simply just better than we were. And I can't believe we lost by this much. We're only a 75 overall, but we did so well against Air Force that I set my expectations higher than I should have. And that means we're going to be in a battle with these two guys until the end of the year. Wyoming's a little bit closer to our overall and they haven't won a single game all season. So this feels like a good chance to pick up a win, but we don't. And I should have never even mentioned a conference championship. We beat one team and somehow in my head, I thought we might be able to compete for it, but at least we took down this one. And that's a big result if I want to avoid getting fired again. Next up is undefeated San Diego State though. So I think we all know what's about to happen. And I'm just glad we signed Steve Williams and Derek Swan. For the first time this off season, we shouldn't have any walk-ons on our team going into next year. And all it takes is one more loss for us to not be able to make a bowl. I don't think I've ever seen New Mexico sitting undefeated at this point in a season, but there's no way we were going to beat them. So we're just going to keep on advancing through the year. And at least we guaranteed that we got one more win than we did in the previous season. That one against Utah State was close and we're still in the lead on both these 80 overalls. So we might just luck out putting together the exact class that I was hoping for. And after losing by one last week, we won this game by a point. It was about time that something started going our way and to end the season, we lose to Fresno State. So we're finishing at three and nine, but this is only the second season with players on this roster. Assuming we get Brett Jones and Mark Payne, we've also gotten every position we needed. And there's zero chance that I get fired. So we're setting ourselves up better and Chad Peters improved a lot. As a team, we scored a lot more touchdowns this season, but we're gonna have to say goodbye to our best wide receiver, Mark McCoy. And this linebacker from Canada is literally insane. Make sure to let me know down in the comments which players represented your state in this video. And it's safe to say both Arkansas and California did us well. To replace those two, we have Derek Swain and Marvin Gwishwen. But more importantly, at the top of our board, we have these two players. And there was never a doubt in my mind that we wouldn't sign them both. We've somehow pulled in so many top recruiting classes already. And I would have rebuilt a team in a bigger conference if I knew we'd be able to recruit this well. To my surprise, athlete Raymond Mills becomes an 81 overall free safety, but we just got one, so he's playing at strong safety. And then Steve Williams is obviously going to be playing quarterback. We are going to need somebody to play fullback for us, so I'm going to move this guy from Oklahoma there. And I just realized we only have five wide receivers, so one of these guys needs to be moved over as a placeholder, and it's going to be Reggie Hill. All I wanted to do is make sure we didn't get any walk-ons, but I forgot to sign a guard. So we're just going to move this kid from Wyoming over there, even if he's only a 53. Now that we have a decent foundation, it's time to start using the player progression module again. And as a one-star school, we're not going to get great improvements, as you'll see some of these guys regressed or didn't go up at all. We're going to have to build up this program with these 51 guys, but I can proudly say that our entire roster is built off of players from one state each, and Maine's the only one that we're not using. I'm glad that we're able to count Canada and Washington, D.C. in this, even if they're not states, because it gives us a couple more numbers, and we're going to have to start looking at positions in states to replace. With only two seniors, one of them being from Texas and one of them being from Hawaii, we're not going to need to recruit much, but I'm sure there's some positions on this team that are much weaker than others. Also, we could always cut this 51 overall from Delaware, so I would love to replace him and find somebody better from that state. There's just not that many options. Now that we have a full lineup, though, I'm going to start redshirting guys that are from states like South Dakota, because that way I have more time to find his replacement, and we can get better than this from Michigan. This is going to be a roster-building challenge throughout the entire rebuild, but I'm excited for the process, and now the orange spots on the map show players that I'm willing to cut and replace. My hope is this 98 speed athlete from Texas is who's going to replace us there. And then in Hawaii, we have this linebacker, but I've also added a lot of other positions to our board because we're going to need positions like defensive end and lineman. Whenever I look at our team ratings, our offensive line and our defensive line are the two worst. So that's what we need to improve so we can be higher than a 79 overall. I am happy to see that we're not supposed to be the worst team in the country though. And even if they project us last in our division, I think we're starting to get somewhere. We've never played in the Rocky Mountain Showdown before, so I figured we might as well since Colorado's ranked, and they'd start out up 14 to 0, but I'm hoping we can convert this fourth and four. With Julius Harrison holding onto the ball, it's back to a one possession game, but our defense hasn't been able to get them off the field yet, and here we go. We have a chance to do it here, so I'm hoping they just take their three. That's not what the Buffaloes opted to do, though, so I've run commit on fourth and one, and we'd score immediately after that, then get an interception, so things are looking good. I haven't really used the tight end from Montana, though, so I'm going to try to thread the needle to him here, and there's Kyle Goss holding onto the football as a junior. Throughout the entire third quarter, we've been able to maintain our lead pretty well and we're going to get a stop. So we're still up by seven points, but they have gotten us to a third and 15 and Chad Peters is going to complete the pass. Our mascot is pumping up the crowd now because we're on the verge of beating a ranked team for the first time in this rebuild. And every single time they get us to a third down, we've been able to pick it up with another catch. We're getting very close to getting into the end zone, but then our offensive line just didn't block. So that's why it's one of the main positions that we have to make sure we improve. And that was such an amazing throw from Chad Peters. I am very impressed by it. We're also going to hold them. So this one's over, but there was no reason for them to punt it back to us on fourth and six. We might even get a return out of it if I'm able to get around these defenders, but they caught me. And we just run out the rest of the clock to secure
year our rivalry win. That result got us a lot of respect, moving us up to number 72 in the country. But it's very clear to me that here at Colorado State, there's just going to be certain players, especially five stars, that we can't acquire yet. I'm going to have to revamp our board, but hopefully we beat UNLV first. And I know we're going on the road, but we're five overalls better than them, and it doesn't matter at all. We shouldn't be getting dominated by 24, especially if Chad Peters plays like this. But clearly something isn't right defensively, so I'm going to go after these four players that will hopefully help fix it. As soon as we can get players in for a visit, that's exactly what we have to do. But there aren't enough guys coming to justify jumping into this, so we're just going to have to sim it, hope we win, and then land those two linemen. But we only got one of them, and of course it's the guy from Oklahoma, so we can't go after this five-star wide receiver. We're also starting to lose very quickly on strong safety Mark Levine, so we probably won't get this. And if I'm going to go after anybody from Texas, I feel like it should be this guy over a lineman. After readjusting our board, these are the 10 players that I've decided we're going to go after, and I'll be replacing a lot of players that are on our current roster, but there's nobody from Wyoming that I want, so we're just going to be stuck with this 53 overall for another year. Setting up a board will be even more chaotic with 16 seniors on next year's roster, but I'll be very happy if we land everybody on our board right now, and I don't see us winning this game on the road even if I jump into it, so I just simmed it. Putting together a roster with these restrictions is like solving a really difficult puzzle, and Wyoming makes for the perfect visit week because they haven't won a single game this season. We're not normally a team that's favored, but we are in this matchup, and apparently it's a rivalry called the Border War. I've learned so much about college football just by playing NCAA football, and we're down inside the red zone. So we're about to get the first points, and I throw it straight to him. I'm gonna give Chad Peters a break and let Michael Ramsey try to punch it in himself, but he can't. So it's back to passing the rock, and that is gonna be reeled in. Terrell McCoy's been pretty good for us out of the slot, and he's been representing Tennessee in this video where we are hopefully gonna find him again. He couldn't catch it, so the Kentucky kicker is gonna have to come on and hit this. But I'm not very worried because it took Wyoming four quarters to get to our red zone, and by now we have 27 points, so there's not that much that they can do. Their quarterback's trying to scramble, and he juked us out. It's not gonna be a problem, though, as McCoy catches another. And this is a very good visit week for the guys that came. I think we're gonna get a couple commits with this win, and Chad Peters had five touchdowns, so everybody that came had to be impressed, which is why I'm not surprised that there's four yellow names on our board. Half of the guys that we're going after have already committed, including Brandon Tate, who I think we're just gonna move over to corner, and we've even taken a lead on Mark Levine, but you might have noticed I added this quarterback from Michigan to our board, and that's because he has 92 throw power. Our current player from Michigan was the 63 overall that I'd gladly cut, because he might not even start for Eastern Washington. Now, when I decided to sim this last year, I'm pretty sure we lost, so I'm hoping history doesn't repeat itself, and it didn't, which means we're sitting at 3-3 three and three at the mid-season point. I would love if this team could make it to a bowl, but we can only hop in and play one more game, so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to make that happen, because we have a few tough matchups coming up like this one at UCLA, and they beat us too. By now, things aren't looking great, but Boise State is 1-7, and seven, and they beat us by 7 still. We're also losing points on both Mark Levine and Ronald McKenzie, so we're probably not going to win those recruiting battles, which is going to cause a lot of trouble. At this rate, I've just given up on the season. We're on a four-game losing streak. You can make it five. And the guard didn't go to Washington on his visit week, but Mark Levine is visiting USC this week. So this could be where we lose him, and I just hope that I don't see the committed message. Well, I don't know what happened to the Trojans, but they dropped out of the battle. So going into the offseason, we landed Mark Levine, and I'm not sure if I'm going to start Chad Peters for senior season. Freshman Steve Williams is right behind him, and nothing about our offense looked great once again. I mean, we didn't even have a wide receiver get more than 513 receiving yards, and Will King got hurt, so he didn't have as many tackles as normal. I should be on the hot seat, but they're not going to fire me, so that's extremely helpful, and I thought we would be fine saying goodbye to the guy from Hawaii and Texas, but then the one from Washington, D.C. is transferring because of playing time, and he got plenty of chances. That's going to be a pain to replace that territory, and I don't want a 50 overall, so I rejected that transfer, and let's hope that we sign Kelvin Anderson. He gives us another option at quarterback, and sure enough, we got him, so somehow we managed to pull in another top 20 class, but the computer is definitely signing some players that I'm not. I hate that they do that because then I have to go in and cut all of these guys, and the only ones I keep are the 10 that I actually put on our board and target it. With the addition of Kelvin Anderson, I'm actually going to make Steve Williams a halfback because we're going to be losing two of them that are seniors after this season, and that means Jeremy Hicks has to get cut. We also need a new left end, so I'm going to move Greg Jackson over to that position, and the plan was always to have Mark Levine play somewhere as a linebacker. I've confused myself a lot though by signing players in states that we already had, which has led to us making Brandon Tate a wide receiver instead of a halfback. My brain hasn't had to work this much since I was in college, and we need to improve our team prestige as soon as possible because I cannot stand our players not improving much. Now Michael Ramsey probably won't even start as a senior because we have junior Mark Robinson for the next two years, and I was a little bit worried that I didn't handle it right, but after going over to Pipeline States, I saw that we still only have one player from every state. We got 12 seniors that we're losing though, which means I need to update our map, and I know we're dropping weird ones like the punter from Rhode Island, so I am very 
thankful there's a five star in this state. I'm also going to redshirt Steve Williams since he's no longer playing quarterback for us. And I don't want to butcher the pronunciation again. So I'm going to redshirt this right end, which is when I decided that any player that's a sophomore is getting the red shirt that can like Joe Howe. And then both of our starting safeties, because I realized one thing, if they're redshirted by the time they're seniors, they're going to be on the same team as Colvin Anderson. And it might be optimistic, but I'm going to give us a four year time frame to shoot for winning it all. I hope I can make that happen. And I went ahead and updated the map where there's a lot of good states on it. So I've been able to find quite a few good prospects that would slot in nicely, including this guy from Washington, D.C. Tight ends are so difficult to find and recruit on this game, so we need to get him and our overall continues to increase. With that in mind, I don't know why we're projected to be so bad still. And when I scroll through team overalls in our division, we're literally the highest overall one here. The same is true on the other side of the Mountain West as well, so we could win the conference. And that means all three games I'm hopping into this season have got to be conference games. Currently, our four-year plan has us set up to be the number 16 team when we want to push for a title, and I'm kind of tempted to just go ahead and start freshman Kelvin Anderson so he can develop over these next few seasons. I feel bad for Chad Peters because he got us up to this point, but that's just how it has to be and we are losing so many points on this tight end. I think we're gonna have to go for this fullback from Rhode Island and just move him over to that position. And with the luck I have, we started losing points on Brett Roberts, so now we have to go after Chad Williams. I don't think there's gonna be any players from Rhode Island that I really wanna get unless this kid's a gym and he went up by five overalls, so that's not bad. All of this recruiting is starting to just confuse me again, so I'm ready to get back to simming and we beat Eastern Washington, where in his debut, Kelvin Anderson did throw a pick, but we got the win. After that, I finally sorted everything out with our top target on our board being this guy from Illinois because he would be an amazing wide receiver. And then we'd probably throw her on Washington at linebacker. He is a Juco, so we're gonna have to redshirt him, but I'm pretty happy with how the board looks right now. Zach Davis is Louisiana insurance in case we don't get the tight end. And if we set our visits for this game against San Jose State, we should have a lot of guys coming in. Once we get past Missouri, more players should be ready for one. And we're facing an SEC school, but they're 0-3, so this is very winnable, but they beat us. Only one more player is ready for a visit now, so I guess I could have held off, but I'm ready to start Mountain West Conference play, and there's no way that they're favored over us. This is our chance to make a run in conference play, and I really believe this team could make it happen. I don't love that with two minutes left in the half, nobody's scored yet, but at least our defense is playing well. And what I've noticed so far is Kelvin Anderson might not be ready to be the starter on this team. He's only completed seven of his 20 passes, and now I'm trying to get it out quick enough, which goes over to McCoy for the tutty. I need the freshman quarterback to develop in this game, and he has a chance to get us a few more points before the half, but I think I should take the sack. It wasn't worth turning the ball over there, and our defense would never let the Spartans score anyway, as there's only a few minutes left in this game, and they're still stuck at zero while we've been able to tack on a couple of touchdowns. All it's gonna take is one more stop, and on fourth and six, we are going to hopefully get that. You've gotta be kidding. I just want to secure the visit week win, and they haven't done this all day, but they have gotten all the way down the field on us, and I'm hoping for the shutout here. They have too much time, though, and that's not good. Their quarterback stats are terrible, but in order to seal the game, we have to recover this onside kick, and we didn't. This is exactly why I always play it, to make sure that we can close it out, and I thought I could get over to that ball, but I didn't, and can we please just get them off of the field on this fourth and 15? They'd score a touchdown on the next play, but this time we are able to recover the onside kick, and all I wanted was to make sure that we got the win in the first place. Kelvin Anderson's stats really weren't that bad, and all four of these guys want to be a part of his team, with Kevin Nance being an athlete that will probably put over at safety. Our next game after that isn't a conference one, but it shouldn't be too bad. We've beaten Louisiana Monroe in the past and we do it again. For a freshman to have numbers like this, it's very impressive if he can just cut out the turnovers. But before we see if he can continue to play that well, a word from Prize Picks, today's video sponsor. They've recently come out with a new promotion called Stars Mean More, and it's made both the NBA and the WNBA more interesting. They select a few players from each conference and round in the NBA playoffs, as you can see who they had for the second round, along with all these ladies in the WNBA. And if you include one of them in your winning lineup, you get a 10% payout boost. With the conference finals starting, there's about to be some different ones on the board, and I love the concept behind rewarding people for using the star players in the leagues. Prize Picks is available in over 30 states too, so there's a good chance yours is eligible. And if you are already on there, plus you want some free cash to start out with, code BORDER, the first link in my description, will double your initial deposit up to $100. Now it's time to get back to fixing Colorado State, and I no longer think we're gonna get this athlete, because when I go over to schedule a visit, he already has a full one, and we keep dropping lower. Besides my mistake in that recruiting battle, it seems like we're going to come out on top of all these though, besides maybe on the Pennsylvania guard. And just in case we don't get that athlete from Illinois, I'm going to put a couple of players on our board. They're not going to be better than him, but they could end up being decent replacements. And we still have a conference to win for the first time. Utah State's one and five. So even though it's on the road, we should be able to go out and beat them. And that's why it was ridiculous for our preseason projection to be so low. I'm going to jump into the Air Force and New Mexico games, but those are at the end of the season. So there's still a lot of time 
for us to lose, but we've built a solid team in a very short time frame, and I'm very happy with how things are going. As the year goes on, we're going to continue to pick up commits like this, and I know the overalls aren't as high as they could be, but all these guys would slot in nicely, and I'm just waiting for us to fall out of the battle. The second that happens, we're going to jump right back in, and my guess is it's going to happen after I sim through this week, but we pick up a loss against Boise State. I was saving up the two games I could hop into, and at least Hawaii's 0-7. I'd be shocked if they beat us, but I'm still sad we lost. We aren't out of the battle in this yet, and Kentucky has a lead for this guy. I can't believe my favorite team wants to steal one of the recruits from us, but at least we signed four more guys. And I feel like we should be allowed to schedule him for a visit because Illinois has fallen out of the battle and they're not going to have him come in. To distract myself from that though, I'm ready to play against Air Force and New Mexico, where the Lobos are ranked, which never happens on this game. And the only loss they have on their schedule was to the number one team on the road by three points. It's hard for me to believe that they're actually that good, so my expectation going into this is that we thrash them. But going into the half, they're going to have a lead no matter what against us. And I couldn't get my defense set up for this third and goal where their quarterback's trying to scramble and please let's just knock him down. I'll definitely take only being down by six because we can just start the third quarter with a touchdown. And I still haven't figured out if McCoy is fast enough to beat teams deep, but we're going to try that here. And it was put perfectly on the money. That's the junior wide receiver from Tennessee. And Kelvin Anderson, our quarterback, is representing Michigan. We are now going down to the five. So it's looking like we're about to take a one point lead and I don't want to force it into any of these windows, but I did anyway. It's an old game, so I can't complain about the wide receiver not adjusting to the ball. But now we're on a third and goal with a pocket passing quarterback that makes a great throw. We'd also get a defensive stop and then score another tutty. So with a minute left in the third quarter, we are up by eight. And on third and 13, they are going to throw that well short. Their offense is just falling apart. And my read on this play is going to be Julius Harrison if it's zone, which it is. So we're going to take that all day. All it took was us locking in to take down a top 25 team in conference play, which is big for us because we should be just one win away from making it to the conference championship game now. And if they came back from this, I would be shocked. Junior running back Mark Robinson just fought his way in. And at the end of the day, we got the win that we were looking for. He also had a kick return for a touchdown, which was nice. And we're not falling out of this battle on Bernard Everett. So I'm just going to take off about 150 points. That should allow us to get higher up the board. And you'll see what I mean in a bit. But now it's time to play Air Force for a spot in the Mountain West Conference Championship. And we have a few guys that are on a visit. Those are the other three that I'm trying to lock up. So you could say this is the most important game of the rebuild so far. And Kelvin Anderson has it on this first drive, ready to sling it deep, which we aren't catching. They'd then drive all the way down the field against our defense. But I'm confident that we can get the stop here. And please tell me that Allen does not have enough yardage. We had zones on the field that just watched him as he destroyed our defense, but we are going to drop this. And we did not have a good first quarter. There was a lot of things that didn't go our way. And we've been behind ever since, but we have scored 10 straight. And I'm hoping to get even more here, except we throw an interception. That's the first turnover of the day. And I've started to figure out how to stop their offense if we run commit, but that can also be very risky to do. Here on a third and six, we're still down by four, but we are going to pick it up. And that was exactly what we needed there. Now I'm hoping this is cover two and look at that throw. We have a solid group of wide receivers on this team. I'm hoping that corner route can get open, but I think we had the running back in the flat. And that's what I get for staring down one route. They're sending blitzes. So it is now third and goal from the 20 yard line. And I shouldn't have even tried to force that. We'll take our three with a Kentucky kicker still down by one. And we've gotten them to a third and 13 where Air Force is trying to throw the ball and our DBs just aren't quick enough to keep up. I can only do so much with recruiting. So I can't be picky when guys are slow and it might cost us. It's now second and goal. And again, they're running the option, but we didn't stop them. So it's not looking too good for us. This is man-to-man -man coverage. And there's only one route on the field that is open and we took it. I've been forcing myself to use a pocket passer and he's all right. But it would be so much easier if Kelvin Anderson could just run for a ton of yards. And this is going to get us down to the 15. The problem is if we score too quickly, we're going to leave a ton of time on the table. But that might be a good thing if we're not able to get the two point conversion. My plan is to look at our tight end and just take that route, which he got open on. So now all we need is one stop. And that's not happened yet, but I feel like we're pretty close in this position. And please get the interception. No way they caught that. Brian Price might have just knocked us out of the conference championship. And we only have 51 seconds to go all the way down the field. And what are you doing with that route, McCoy? We should not have gotten 15. I had no idea that his drag was just going to stop in the middle of the play, but we're doing all right. And this is the game of our season right now. They sent in a blitz. We have got to get it out and we got lucky. With all three timeouts, I'm starting to feel a little bit more confident. We even caught that. But the real question is if we go for another two point conversion. And normally I like to in these situations. The overtime on this game can glitch out to where both teams don't get a possession. So we're going to run the exact same play that worked on the last two point conversion and we catch it. Our fans should be thrilled right now, but they technically still have a chance with 24 seconds left. And it looks like they're staying in hurry up mode now.
now they're trying to scramble, but we're going to miss the hit stick and please just bring him down. I cannot believe how close they are to field goal range right now. It looks like they're out in Hail Mary though. Surely we aren't going to let that happen and we are going to get the interception to seal the win. That was such a close ending, but we got a much deserved win over Air Force and that means we should be in the conference championship game. We'd also pick up commits from New Jersey and Pennsylvania and I got to get Blake Williams off of the board because we still have a chance with this 81 overall athlete. Our final game of the year is against the Wolfpack and they're two and eight plus this is at home. So assuming all goes well, we are going to be in the conference championship. And I've been waiting for this moment, but we lose by 16. How is that even possible? They had 527 yards of offense with three turnovers. And I'm just at a loss for words. We still haven't even been locked out of this guy. So that's going to go to the off season and New Mexico has one game left. I normally don't like Air Force, but we need them to beat them right now. And I think this is worth hopping into to spectate. For this one time, we are rooting for the Falcons, but they wouldn't get the ball back until there's 18 seconds left. So I don't think they're going to win this one, especially if they go down in bounds. At least get a spike off so you all have one more play. And I didn't realize our division was going to have a team that was going to finish 10 and 2 and knock out our chances of making the conference championship. New Mexico is going to get the win. And we beat the best two teams, but that still wasn't enough. The only decent thing that happened was this battle went to the offseason, and our linebacker from Colorado won the Bednarik Award. He also brought in the Nagurski, and I don't know if the awards are ever going to stop. With 110 total tackles, Will King led our defense again, and what a career from this guy from Canada, which is needed because our running stats, especially with senior Michael Ramsey, were disappointing. And I'm glad that our best two wide receivers are juniors because we are going to lose a couple seniors. As for Kelvin Anderson's stats, though, he is only a freshman quarterback, so these numbers are amazing. And we have a very winnable ball game against Ball State. We didn't get to the Mountain West Conference Championship like I wanted, but I still feel like we are on pace to be a contender four years from now. And we took a major step forward this season, but it's because of our freshman quarterback. This entire game's been super easy, and we're about to finish it off with with a touchdown run. So there's no way they come back now. And I hope that all the seniors we're losing doesn't affect our team too much because I want to be good again next year. I've recruited some solid replacements, but they have to develop first. And there's the stop that really does it. Now we get to celebrate our first bowl win in this rebuild. And Kelvin Anderson played amazing. I definitely made the right decision in starting him over the senior. And I'm okay with saying goodbye to Chad Peters, but I don't like losing players like Kyle Goss or our awesome linebacker, Will King. And apparently our punter from Rhode Island even went in the seventh round. We keep getting these transfers for request, but I'm just going to decline them because I've been using my brain to put together a plan to get players like this. And if we have a couple extra points, we might as well just put those in too. 15,000 on him should be a guarantee. And of course it was. I signed 13 players myself, but the computer signed another nine for us, which gave us another top 25 class, but now I have to find them and cut them. Just like last year, we need a left end. So that is where Zach Davis comes into play. And we need another free safety, but my plan was always to move Mark Lyles over there. As for this kicker, he was always going to be a punter for us. And now we get to deal with these exciting three athletes wherever it's going to play at wide receiver. Then Washington, who still needs to sit out for a season, is going to go over to right end. And Nance is just another option for us at halfback. Now we need player progression to go in our favor. And this is what happens whenever your prestige goes up. Steve Williams is a 90 overall. But I did notice that Blake Williams still ended up on our team, so I'm just going to make sure I remove him now. I must have made another mistake, though, because we have this guy from Louisiana. And then left end Zach Davis, who now that I think about it, I didn't even recruit. And it stinks, but we're going to have to cut him from our team. With all that out of the way, now it's official. We only have one player from each state on this roster, and I'm not happy that I had to cut that 82 overall freshman, but the game wouldn't let me cut the tight end. Now that all that's out of the way, though, we are ready to start another season, and it should go well being in the Mountain West Conference, but I need to also update my map. It's been over an hour since that last clip, and let's just say things are not looking good. I was pretty optimistic going into this recruiting period, even though I knew that we had four senior wide receivers to replace, and with the states that we can pick players from, this is what I've been able to come up with. You might be wondering how that's even possible. And it's because I haven't shown you all some of the athletes like Mark McBride from Texas, but we're going to have to beat out the Longhorns to get this guy. And then I thought maybe an athlete from West Virginia or South Dakota would save us, but both of these guys are either playing linebacker or strong safety. If we're going to get four wide receivers, we need to get athlete Jay Johnson from Tennessee, but he's not on our board, so we can't put points on him. So we're going to have a hard time replacing a lot of positions on our team, but at least we're supposed to be good. Since we're coming off that collapse at the end of last season to lose the Mountain West, I'm hoping we can get revenge, and I'm very scared to advance the week. I mean, it's a good thing we're an 84 overall, but how we're doing on these prospects is going to change everything, and I don't know if we're going to be able to get this guy from Texas. Another really big one is Jay Johnson, like I said, and it looks like nobody's going after him. So that might have just saved us, because I think I can distribute points pretty evenly to where we can get to every prospect on here, and I was also able to get the first level of instant commit. So there's a 5% chance anybody we're in the lead in comes to our school now, and we already got one, but I 
think that's all we're going to have. I will gladly take it though. Now it's us versus Colorado. We should be able to beat them. But Anderson did not start off his sophomore season well. And now we're going on the road to BYU. We've already lost to one Big 12 team, so this could go bad for us, but we do get the win. And my only focus is making sure we win our conference. We're favored in this one, so we should be able to sim it. And we've rebuilt this school to have a 12 overall difference over Hawaii, which is all that we needed. As for recruiting, we weren't able to get any more instant commits, but we're in the lead on pretty much everybody besides Mark McBride. So this is going to be the one guy that we're going to focus on getting because he's one of the two decent receivers available and they're going to come on a visit against Wyoming. I would also like to point out when I was building our board, New Hampshire is one of the states we needed to replace a player in and there are five players from this with four of them having deal breakers, including the only good one. There's really no reason to even try and go after this 56 overall unless he turned out to be good. And I'm pretty sure we lost to Boise State last year. So this is the first game that we're going to play. We've already won a bowl game on their field, but it wasn't against them. And so far they've held us scoreless in this one. I've been trying to feed it to our old quarterback, Steve Williams, who's a 90 overall now, but I can't get over the fact that he was going to be our quarterback of the future at one point, And now he's our star running back who improved a ton during the off season. By the time the fourth quarter rolled around, we are still in a tight game. It is 21 all and the freshman keeps dropping passes. We're going to need him to improve a ton since next season, he's going to be one of the only two wide receivers that's on this roster right now. And after fumbling the punt return, we're in a ton of trouble. We literally got to stop a second ago, but we gave them the ball back instantly. And now they're inside our red zone where we should have gotten the pick. I wasn't expecting this to be such a hard game, but it's a conference road one, so it should be. And I don't know if this team has the speed to beat them over top, but I think we do on the right side of the field. And that is a great throw. Harrison's going to bring it in and he is going to go down at the five. Just by the way that they lined up there, I figured we could pull that one off and we're going to get in. So it's on our defense to seal the deal now. And I can't bait their quarterback into throwing a pick. We're still set up to stop them though. It's fourth and 12. And I just want to survive this game with a win. I am using that. And we have a zone over there to knock it down. They still have all three of their timeouts, but they had a guy set to bite on the read option. And do they realize our quarterback's slow? He has 60 speed, but they were intimidated by that. And that means we're picking up another win. After that, we have the border war. And I know we have a lot of guys coming in for this, but we're 17 overalls better than them. So I can't believe it was that close. We could have lost that game, but instead we picked up all of these commits. And all that's really left on our board is Mark McBride, who we have a big lead on. We got the few linemen that we needed. We got the special teams players, the quarterbacks, the safeties, the linebackers and Jay Johnson. So things seem to be coming together. And this feels like another one that we should win with ease, which we do. That means we're going to be tied with Air Force for first place in our division. And I don't love that Oklahoma's also on our schedule, but we're close to their overall. So we could win this one, even though it's on the road. I'm just advancing to week 12 because I want to win our conference. But then we drop this to New Mexico. So I'm just thankful the Falcons have also lost a game and the Lobos are a 72 overall. So they're going to continue to fall. I would also love to point out that for whatever reason, the game thinks that we're going to be the number one team in a couple of years. And I hadn't checked recruiting for a second, but Mark McBride committed to our school. All that's left is this bum from New Hampshire. And if you're from that state, I apologize, but I'm just salty that the 77 overall didn't want to come to our school. He chose Pitt, so he wanted to play in a bigger conference. And all we have to do is survive this week at San Jose State, which we didn't do. That shouldn't be happening, especially since I just realized we picked up a level 20 offensive coordinator and Sim has not been on our side during this season, but we still could win our conference. Everybody's just been beaten up on each other, which gives me a little bit of hope. And that is a packed crowded Air Force. I'm not sure if it's ever been this full. Getting them off the field early on would be a big deal. And here on third and 11, I am all over that halfback screen. So we'd get the ball back and you already know what we're doing on our first drive against them. This is how you open up a very important game. And Steve Williams was able to easily punch it in. Let's just say we have come to play this year so far and they are struggling immensely versus our defense. They're not getting this third down either. We're about to end this first half up 28 to zero versus them. And even though they put up a good fight trying to come back, that was never going to happen. We'd win by 17 in the end, and our sophomore quarterback is playing like an upperclassman. We topped off our recruiting class by signing the 57, but there's still one state that we could get players from, and that's Idaho, but there's not that much good that's still available. I knew we weren't going to have a chance on Josh Hill, so I took him off our board very early on, and now we can choose between one of these two players, but that's only going to give us a bit more depth. What's really important is that we don't lose our last conference game, so we're going to hop into that, but we have this one first, and again, we're like 17 overalls better, so this should be the easiest win in the world. The last matchup left on our schedule is now Utah State, and I don't care how much we're supposed to win by, I am hopping into it and making sure that we do. It could be like the Air Force one where it's over by halftime, and that's my goal in this matchup, but they were the first team to get points, so that might not be as easy as I was hoping it would. Bernard Everett, the freshman, is starting to get more involved though, and he better be making good plays for us because we worked hard to get this guy. With about 45 seconds left in the half now, we're about to make it 28-3, to but we fumbled it away to them, and they've picked it up, but still backwards. So 
somehow we got a safety. The fact that they have to punt it back to us and they didn't get that ball is absolutely hilarious. We have our starting running back back at kick returner, and I want to try to get even more points, but even if we're not able to do so, this game's already pretty much over. There was never a chance for the Aggies to come back, which I'm happy with, and we've earned our spot in the Mountain West Conference Championship. That's all that Kelvin Anderson wanted, and it looks like we're going to be playing our game against number 15, San Diego State. They're ranked higher, but they're a 77 overall, and neither of us have any major injuries. That's the one thing that's worked out pretty well for us in this rebuild, because with a smaller roster size, that could really cost us some games. And after holding us to a field goal, they're probably going to get the first touchdown. On second and goal, they handed it off and we couldn't get in, so we've had to put together a drive against them, and this one's going to take us past midfield. We're very close to being able to punch it in, and that juke move is about to do it, but they're saying we were a bit short, so Mark Robinson's getting credit for the touchdown instead. That's the guy from Idaho that we got at the very beginning, and look at that, we're getting them off the field on third down. That makes this a big drive before halftime, and we're about to reach the end zone, so now we're up by 10 points, and that is huge. They'd also turn it over again, and we're going to take advantage, which means means it's going to be even harder for them to come back. And because no one did much in the third quarter, now that we're here in the fourth, I don't think they're going to be able to pull this one off. We've just had too much success, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And those are some good blocks, which means Steve Williams is getting another touchdown and we are taking home the Mountain West Conference Championship. We also just made sure that they don't make it to what's now the 14 team playoff. And I'm sure Kelvin Anderson's happy about that, but he's probably even more excited to have this trophy to bring back home. Unfortunately, it looks like our bowl game could be a bit tough, but we're a conference champion champion, so that's why. And Kelvin Anderson's leading the country in passing yards. That's right, the sophomore quarterback improved his stats, but he also had a lot of turnovers. And I think this season from Steve Williams is the best we've seen out of a running back. As for our wide receivers, there's a lot of seniors that are going to be gone, including the top two. And I think we're always going to have a linebacker that has a ton of tackles. I am a little worried about one thing, though, and that's Steve Williams declaring for the draft early. I don't want that to happen, and our bowl game has glitched out in the stadium. It's supposed to be an Allegiant Stadium. So this is the only clip from this game that's going to make the cut, but nothing that exciting really happened as we break a tackle. With Steve Williams getting in, we're up by 17, and he had three touchdowns, but I'm proud of how our defense played. We'd actually finished the season ranked inside the top 25, and this has been a very chaotic six years. I've literally been playing all day, but my car's been in the shop for like a week, so it's not like I can go anywhere, and we have multiple players that are trying to leave. The first big one is this freshman quarterback, and why do the players from Washington, D.C. keep transferring out? That is so frustrating, and I'm glad that Douglas decided to stay, but we have to convince Steve Williams to come back, and he does. Outside of all that, we're saying goodbye to a lot of good players like the kicker from Kentucky. And Jay Marshall will be missed, but so will the wide receivers from Nevada and North Dakota. It's also come to my attention that we've gotten ourselves a maxed out offensive coordinator, and this is the least exciting offseason period yet. We didn't really need him, but now we have an extra player that could move to quarterback, and we're gonna have to figure that out because I didn't plan on our guy transferring out. But at least we have another top 25 class, and I'm gonna see what our wide receiver room looks like after I move things around. First, First of all, this is why it was so important that Steve Williams didn't leave us. And you already know that we're moving both Jay Johnson over to wide receiver and Mark McBride, so this shouldn't take any time at all. We're definitely going to try to improve these bottom two players in this next recruiting period, but we have a senior tight end, so we're also going to have to fill that role. And I think Brandon Young should make for a pretty solid right guard. As for Ivan Washington, the reason I signed him is so we could have somebody to just fill in at QB. And after these two seniors leave, we're going to need another defensive tackle, so I'm just going to put Chris Thibodeau over there now. One of these two guys also so as to be our kicker, and to be honest, neither option's great. But I'm just trying to figure out where I can move guys around to where they can make an impact, and this guy's an offensive lineman. I thought he was going to play free safety for us, though, which is the one spot we still need to fill, and Brian Burns can't either, so we're going to put him at linebacker. Then the faster freshman over at free safety, which then allows us to drop this 73 speedster over at strong safety. I think I finally got everything sorted, and now it's time for player progression, which went very well, but there's no way we're going to be able to convince Steve Williams to come back next year. It's weird to think that he used to be a quarterback, but he made the transition pretty easily, and we're finally gonna have to cut this guy from Wyoming. The reason for that is because that's where our new punter's from, and I feel like this team could at least make the playoffs, so I have started to put points into game management. It looks like we're only set to lose four seniors as well because I'm gonna redshirt Brett Jones, and I feel like we're so prepared to make a championship run next season. Any of the states that our lower overall guys are from, though, I'm gonna be looking at them just to see if we can pick up other talent that'll go on our team next year, and maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to find somebody from DC that doesn't transfer out. That's the one place on this team that a player is not from. And with a schedule like this, I'm ready to try and make our first playoff push in this rebuild. It's the next day now when we're starting the season at number 19. So of course we're projected to be the best team in our conference. And there's only 11 players on our board that we're going to go after, so we don't even need a map. And I have to say there is a linebacker from DC that's a 79 overall. Between him and 
wide receiver Josh Lester. I think we could be doing just fine, and it looks like these battles are going to be ones that we have a chance at winning. Before we even play our first game, we've moved up to number 16, and this roster has us sitting at a 91 overall. That means we should cruise through conference play, and I can hop into non-conference games like this one. With a minute left in this first half, we are losing to them, but I think we're about to score. So we should be fine. There's plenty of time left, and on fourth and inches, Steve Williams is going to get the outside edge plus a little bit more. It really hasn't been a great first half for our offense, but there is still plenty of time remaining, and there's a lot of new freshman wide receivers out there on the field, so it's taking Kelvin Anderson longer than I would have liked to get in a rhythm with them. Stuff like that would have definitely worked with last year's team, and on third and 10 with the man-to-man -man coverage, we can pick this up inside the 10. That's all they seem to want to run against us, but I can't complain, and Jay Johnson's able to bring in another. If we could win this one, the only game on my schedule that really scares me is the Texas one. We're going to stop them, and that's how you guarantee that you get the ball back. To keep this drive alive, we are going to have to convert on fourth and six, but they keep running man-to-man, -man. and the one time that they don't, we're going to dot it up. We've scored 21 straight on the Buffaloes, and our defense on third and 12 gets a sack, so we might go for 28 straight, but that can't happen because they did end up holding us to just a field goal. By now, though, the game should be over, and it was, which means we're starting the season with a win. I feel like Kelvin Anderson's going to end up taking home the Heisman because we're better than a lot of teams, and the colleges on our schedule that we're facing are going to be easy to destroy. I'm not even worried about Air Force this year, so I'm going to schedule everybody that I can to come visit during this game, and I'd be pretty upset if we lost this one in sim, but that's not going to happen. It was really close, though, because of these two interceptions, and I'm not sure that we deserve to be ranked this high early on in the year. We would get some big names to sign for us, though, like this tight end from Maryland and the wide receiver from Kentucky, who's actually going to replace the wide receiver that we just recruited from Kentucky, and I think we're going to be good in a lot of these battles, but the one that gives me some concerns is Brandon Evans. We're only gaining 30 points on him a week, and he couldn't come to the last game, so he's going to come against Boise State, but we have to get to that one first. And the Hilltoppers are just as bad as everybody else in our conference. I think we can just go straight to the game at Texas. We get the win there, and I'm really hoping that we don't get an unlucky sim result, but that's what happened against Boise State, and against Wyoming, we just escaped. In that time frame, we'd only signed Josh Lester, which is going to really help us, but I can't blame some of these other guys for not committing to our school. And just like us, Boise State's only lost one conference game, so that could be an issue. If they don't lose another one, they have the tiebreaker over us. And I wasn't expecting to be a higher overall than Texas. As I look at some of these other top teams' ratings, though, we could definitely go out and beat most of them. So we've developed much better than I thought we would, and I just hope that we don't mess this up. You could argue that this is our biggest game of the season, even though the Longhorns have struggled quite a bit, and they're going to try to send in some pressure, which did not get in in time. So far, our defense hasn't been terrible, but it also hasn't been as good as it could be. We have to make this tackle here, and that was a crucial hit to force them to take their three. However, it is now third and 14, and I don't think we're going to pick this up. So their defense is holding us well, and I'm not a big fan of how this first half has gone so far. I'm hoping we can get the interception, though, and we do. I'm also going to try the lateral it, but I wasn't able to get it off, and that left side of the field is wide open if we're able to get a couple of good blocks here, but Steve Williams got caught up. We'd still be able to drive it down the field, though, and on fourth and three, they swat it down, which means we probably should have kicked a field goal. And this SEC defense has been giving us a lot of issues throughout the entire game. We can't mess up on this opportunity inside the red zone, though, and this is going to be underthrown. So maybe we would be better off if we just handed it off every so often, but I love the pass it instead. If we can keep everybody around, this is definitely a championship contender next season. But for this year, I'd be happy if we won just a playoff game. They've gotten us to third and goal, and I'm going to take the halfback screen and Williams doesn't go anywhere, which means we should just take our three. But it's been a while since I've ran a fake field goal, so that's what we're going to do instead, and they never stick to us like that. They're also out there in five wide, so we got to send in a blitz against them. But I've been way too aggressive in this game, going for it on all these fourth downs, which is why we're even in this position in the first place, but Steve Williams is open in the end zone. It's always our defense that keeps us in these games. They're not getting this third and 14, and this is the same thing that happened to Colorado. We're just a few first downs away from closing this one out, and our tight end is gone. So Chad Williams, the backup, was able to make a great catch, and even though they'd respond back after that, I don't think it's going to be enough, but they did just told us on third and 11. I'm not happy we have to punt it again, and I shouldn't have let them get down the field so quickly on their last drive, but at least this punt's taking a good bounce. I'm still confident that we can lock down here. We just got to generate some pressure, and this is an easy interception, but Marlon Douglas drops the ball, and now it's second and 10, where 11 broke that press flawlessly, but they had nobody. I've been holding them successfully all game, so this one shouldn't be any different. We're not going to hit them in time, though, and with no timeouts left, things are about to get incredibly interesting as Terrell catches it, and he's down at the 40. I think this one's going to go to overtime unless we can somehow get a lucky interception against them, but a sack would also do the trick, and they are going to throw it straight to Parrish, who gets the interception.
And that is what I asked for. In order to win that one, we had to force three turnovers. But I'm just glad our defense stepped up. And if there's any conference game I should play this season, it's gotta be the one against San Diego State. They're ranked 25th right now, while we have flown all the way up to number six. And I don't love that we're dealing with these two injuries. At least they'll be back later on in the year. And let's just make sure that we take care of business. Approaching halftime, they haven't been able to score yet, but we also only have seven points. And unless we can get lucky with a jump ball after forcing that stop, we're gonna go into the half only up by a possession. Freshman wide receiver Jay Johnson just made an incredible catch though, and then that ball went to the wrong player. So we're not going to get in field goal range, and eventually we're bound to give up some points, which is probably going to happen here. I keep trying to send in blitzes, but that time they ran it up the middle against us, and I can't believe how well their defense is shutting us down. We're going to have to figure things out offensively. Maybe we're going to have to switch up our playbook and run with it on the ground, because these new wide receivers are only able to do so much, and Steve Williams is the one player that should already be in the NFL. Unfortunately, they would be able to respond back with a touchdown of their own, so it is tied up, and I shouldn't have lateraled it. But I love to try out new things on this game, and we're just gonna make sure that we pick up the first. I also just realized that there's only a minute left in this game, so there's not much time on the clock, and I probably shouldn't take this into the end zone. I've given them a chance to drive down the field and tie it back up, sending it to overtime. We didn't get the interception there, and now I'm starting to get a little bit worried. We need them to take these checkdowns like that, and they have a timeout left, but they spiked the ball. It's all gonna come down to one play, and here on it, we are just gonna have to play some good coverage. Nothing can get open in the end zone, which might have happened, but we swatted it down. Colorado State has survived again, but we're not playing like a contender, and thank goodness Wyoming lost. Now, all we have to do is win out, and we'll be in the Mountain West Conference Championship game. New Mexico didn't stand a chance, but I'm a bit sad because there was a signing that we weren't able to get, and it was with Cliff Young deciding on Minnesota. I guess he didn't want to be a part of a top 10 program, and Utah State fell off a ton because they're 1-8 and eight this season, but I remember earlier on in the dynasty, they were actually good. As the season winds down, we are missing our starting free safety with a broken wrist, but all of our opponents are bad, and we just fumbled another prospect away with this guy choosing the Bulldogs. I think we have the conference on lock since we have the tiebreaker against Air Force, so we're just gonna simulate till week 15 and see where we're ranked. We beat UNLV by 9, but it should have been by more points than that, and Fresno State didn't worry us. We'd also signed the 5-star linebacker from DC, and with our week schedule, I don't think there's any chance that we get a first round bye in the 14-team playoff. I am gonna remember to change up our playbook though, just so we can rely on the run a bit more and just like everybody predicted, we're playing San Diego State in the conference championship. Unfortunately, we don't have anybody in the Heisman race, but the Aztec starting quarterback got injured, and I'm hoping switching up our playbook helps out our offense. We had a couple of rough games during the year, and maybe San Diego State's just really good because we are struggling to pull away against them. They play so much better than their overall gives them a credit for. We're about to go up against them, but we still have a lot of work to do, and I'm hoping their kicker can't hit from this far out, which he didn't stand a chance at drilling. Nance also has an opportunity to return this kick off and with that back juke, he just doesn't have the speed, or maybe he does. They've missed a tackle, and he breaks one too. That set us up to drive down the field and score again, and they honestly have no choice but to go for this fourth and eight where they are going with the short pass. I would be excited that we're about to take a three-possession lead against them, but somebody missed our extra point, so we're not kicking. We're going for it on fourth and two, and we are going to just get it. Steve Williams fought so hard for that, and we just ran away with the game after that play. It's always nice to beat the Aztecs, and remember, our goal is just to win one playoff game. Game. So I hope we get a good draw allowing us to make that happen. Well, I certainly can't complain about us getting Army because they're only an 83 overall and Kelvin Anderson led the country in passing yards again. So shout out to him, but he keeps on throwing more and more interceptions. That's why I switched up our playbook to make sure that we feed Steve Williams. And I can finally say that we had a wide receiver with over a thousand receiving yards and double digit touchdowns. Nothing about our defensive stats stuck out though. So that's why it's big that our offense was number three in the country. I don't think Army will give us too many issues. But then again, every time I've said that, I seem to get get caught off guard. So you might be shocked that here in the first quarter, we're about to go up 14 to zero. Steve Williams already has two touchdown runs. He is playing fantastically. And Army's offense has been just as bad as I expected it to be, but they might pick up this third and long. Thankfully, we made the tackle in time and then drove all the way down the field again. Steve Williams is about to get his third and Kelvin Anderson has finally broken the school passing yards record. This one's probably going to be over before halftime. It is not looking good for the Black Knights right now. And I've loved everything that I've seen from this team so far. I figured that we'd win this one, but I had no idea it would be by this much, and we're ready for the quarterfinals. We might have what it takes to make a little bit of a run, especially if Steve Williams plays like that again, and it's kind of shocking Oklahoma got in as a 12 seed. They're currently sitting at 8-4, and four, but they were able to destroy Tennessee by 34 points, so the committee must have known something that we didn't. With eight teams left now, we're the only small program still in it, but that doesn't mean we're not the higher overall team, and we'll see how our new offense does against the Sooners. If we're able to gash their defense, we might just be a championship contender, but I still think we have a better shot next year, even if 
things are looking good so far. On third and 10, they decided to go with man-to-man -man coverage, and that wasn't going to work because Bernard Everett's been having a great year, and I've already been able to stop them once, but we have to be able to make it happen again. We had multiple players that could have caught that pick, but we'd get it back either way, and I'm going to start the fourth quarter going for it on fourth and two, which we made. I've never used the run and shoot playbook before, but it's really not that bad, and it is another third and long for Oklahoma where they ran it. We have come out in these playoff games so far playing extremely well, about to get another touchdown, and this is what happens when you rely on Steve Williams. As we approach halftime, they're trying to fight their way back into this game, but I don't know if they can hit from this far out, and it turns out they can't. I don't think that's going to change very much, though, because we still got the ball to start the third quarter, and I have to say, I love the jerseys that we're wearing right now. If we blow our lead in the final minutes, though, I am going to be very upset. They're getting a tutty, and then with the two-point conversion, they hand it off, which we are going to be able to stop. That means it's still a two-possession game, and they played a lot better in the second half, but it still wasn't enough because we had such a big lead. I'll happily move on to the semifinals, and we're playing either Notre Dame or Ohio State. The Irish haven't lost yet this season, so it'll probably be them, and with a minute left, they're up by two possessions, so this game is over. The toughest team that we could face is now next up on our schedule, so at least our overalls match up really well against them. We might just have what it takes to come out on top here, and if we did, we'd be one win away from a championship. Things are going well so far, but we just fumbled the ball, and we're very fortunate we were able to pick it up because now we could still get a touchdown here. Our backup's in, though, so it's going to be a little bit harder, and for being a low overall, Kevin Nance hasn't been bad. On this third and five, Notre Dame is going to just try to look over the middle, and our zones could have played a little bit better, but that was also my fault for biting so far up, and on this third down, they're not going to get it. If they're sending their kicker out there, they must be confident he can hit, but our offense is just in a rhythm at this point, and we are flying down the field. We already have 10 first downs, and that's going to be another touchdown, hopefully, but Brandon Tate ran out of the end zone, so it's going to be on Williams to help us punch it in, and that is what he should do. With a lead like this, we're just looking for more third down stops, but the halfback draw got us. So we're going to send a blitz in on this one, and the halfback screen has been boxed up. We dropped it, though, so they're going to get a field goal. And that's annoying because it should have turned into a pick six. Ever since then, though, we've done a pretty good job at maintaining our lead against them. They're not getting this third down. So we're still up by one possession, and I'm going to hit them with the play action just to see if anything gets open, but this is a bad pass to make, and we still caught it. I've just been amazed at how well we have controlled some of these games. I'm going to hope that we're able to toast them deep, and Brandon Tate comes down with it to put us back up by two possessions. All we have to do is stop Notre Dame one more time and this is over. So the pressure's on, it is fourth and six, and I saw that they beat us deep, but they're gonna throw this off their back feet, and there's some sort of penalty on the play. Apparently it was against them, so we've lucked out, and it's gonna be incredibly difficult for them to convert on this fourth and 16. They're breaking a sack though, and who on the field is an eligible receiver right now? Their quarterback had all the time in the world, but he didn't get it out, and we're going on to the championship. Steve Williams played really well, and the fact that Texas could make a natty is nuts. Just like Oklahoma, they have four losses this season, but they didn't play well enough against the Wolverines to come out on top, so we're gonna have a tough championship opponent. Worst case scenario, though, everybody just comes back next year, and it's time to see how this one plays out. The fact that this challenge is even possible to do amazes me, and I probably spent an hour or two every season off camera trying to put together a good class so we could make it here, but we just threw an interception out of a sack, and this is not the start that I was looking for. They're definitely about to punch this one into the end zone, but we can respond back assuming this time around things don't go wrong. I'm not very happy about the drop, but I'm sure somebody will make up for it here. And if any of you attempt this challenge, let me know how good of a team you can build. Even if some of the players on this roster do end up going on to the NFL, I think next year's team could be an even higher overall than this one. So whether we win it all in this game or not, I am going to find out what the overall would have been. And we're very close to going up 14 to 7 against them. Ever since we switched up our playbooks, I feel like we just control the game. So I'm going to have to use run and shoot more often when I play. And they would score another touchdown on us, but I'm trying to end the half responding back. That's what we did finding freshman wide receiver Jay Johnson in the end zone. And ever since that moment, not much has changed. It is still a seven point game with two minutes left. So we weren't able to close this one out throughout the third and fourth quarter, but I knew it was going to be tough. Michigan has a minute and a half to respond still, and I'm trying to force them into an interception, but Britt is a very smart QB. So we're probably better off just sending a blitz at him and he's trying to scramble, which he can. It might be dumb, but I'm going to do the exact same thing again. And somebody was open in the flat, but that didn't get them enough. They decided to burn one of their timeouts because of it. And what are we doing with our zone defense and why did we not just make a tackle there? Come on, somebody bring this guy down. I seriously don't know what we're doing right now and our man-to-man -man coverage didn't stick. So I called a timeout just in case they are able to reach the end zone and we're about to bring them down. Now they're forced to spike it, setting up this third and seven where one of their slants should knock it open, but it does. I think we're about to be stuck going to overtime versus them unless we get the pick. And how did one of our DBs not grab that ball? I thought this game was over and we don't have a good kick 
kicker because I didn't worry about recruiting anything. So we're not going to be able to kick a field goal with this much time left unless we can just get lucky with a deep bomb and Brandon Tate has gotten by number 27. That is his 99 speed going to work. I don't know if it's the coordinator boost or what, but that's what it says he has. And when I checked the depth chart and saw this, I knew we had to try to throw it up to him. If I knew he was that fast all along, we would be doing very well, but we missed the extra point and there's no way that they return this for a kickoff. Okay, I almost had a mini heart attack there, but apparently there was a clipping penalty anyway, which allowed them to do that. And I didn't even start paying attention until he was past midfield. That was a great throw though, and we just won a national championship. So it turns out it was possible to do with one recruit from every state. And I told you all we'd get a championship with Kelvin Anderson, but I didn't know it would be this soon. He would decide to go on to the NFL draft though a year early because he accomplished everything that he wanted alongside Steve Williams. So that's going to severely affect how good this team next year is. And I'm not even sure if I've recruited enough people to make it happen now. It's probably best that we just won the championship because I made some mistakes. So I'm going to have to cut players like this wide receiver from South Dakota, but I was still able to make another team that only had one player per state and it had a 99 overall defense, but an 88 offense. If our quarterback and running back didn't go on to the NFL early, it would have been a nasty roster, but thankfully they got us a championship before they left. And I still can't believe that I was able to complete that challenge.